All right, we have our V-Rack set up, and I want to just output these two instruments that we created to the master bus, just so everything's arriving there, and we can control our mix better. And now back to the sequence editor. You'll notice I have my control bar undocked right now. It's free-floating, and just to remind you, we get to that in the preferences over here. When we go to control panel, we have the option of show the control panel window versus docking it. And the reason I'm doing that is that I want to access this control, the wait button in this video, and it's not available when it's docked. So we can record our drums here. We're record enabled. I can hear drums when I hit my keyboard. But there's a couple of things to check before we record. First thing, under the setup menu, we have an input filter. And this will restrict or enable specific MIDI messages from being recorded when we're recording MIDI. So I want to record notes, note on velocities. Really, that's all I'm recording now. The rest isn't really relevant, but just to go through some of them, we can record note off velocities, pitch bend messages, patch changes, and some of these other various MIDI messages. And this is interesting. For MIDI continuous controller messages, we can include or exclude specific messages. I'm going to record them all for now. I'm not really recording any, but in case I wanted to, I can exclude or include specific ones by means of this add button. And I can type in whatever MIDI continuous controller numbers I want and create a list and then add or omit them. So good to know about that in case you're using sliders or knobs on your control surface for recording. And MIDI machine control devices, we can optionally include or exclude that. But I'm going to leave it basically at default. We're just recording notes for the moment. I'm going to click OK. So I can hit record there. I'm ready to go. One other thing to be aware of under the studio menu, you want MIDI patch through enabled so you can hear the sounds as you're hitting the notes and recording. I can hit the record button and we have our one bar count off and record and that'll be fine. But there's a nice feature when we're recording MIDI here called wait. Now what this means is when this is enabled with count off, I'm going to press wait. When I hit the record button now, instead of getting a one bar count off, I'm going to get the count off indefinitely until I hit the first note on my keyboard. So there's record, and we're hearing it until I hit the first note. All right, so I hit stop, and there's our first recording. I'm going to hit one to rewind, and we can hear it. Now let's look at what's happening. I'm going to open my sidebar with shift and the left bracket key, and I'm going to switch the window here to the event list. And I want to view this drum data, so I'm going to use this window target menu to choose the drums. And there's all the notes that we've recorded. Now the window looks a bit busy. I think I want to change some of my time formats. We're seeing the simpty time here and the note durations. It's a bit busy looking. I'm going to hit command option T to bring this window up. And then in the event information, I'm going to turn off frames and durations for the moment. So now we can see the MIDI start times of each of the notes, and they're pretty rough. They're not played very evenly. We know that we have 480 ticks, and I basically played quarters, eighths, and sixteenths, so they should all be falling around 0, 120, 240, 480, but we can see they're off here. There, that one's early, that one's early, some of them are late. Now there's a process of correcting the timing of MIDI notes called quantizing, where we can round them off to the grid. Now in this case, I know I intended to play 16ths, and let's say I want to perfect or correct the timing and have them right on the grid. We use quantizing. There's three different ways of quantizing within Digital Performer. I'm going to look at one right now, and we get to it from under the region menu, and the default key command is command zero for quantize, and it brings up a box, and we have a variety of controls here. So we want to choose what we want to quantize. In this case, it's notes. It can optionally be sound bites or sound bites or beats within the sound bites, which is great for quantizing audio. But for right now, it's notes, and we're just going to quantize the attacks, the note-ons, not the durations or the ends. And here we choose the rhythmic value. I'm going to quantize to 16th notes. We can optionally add triplets or make them triplets and offset the grid. We can add a swing value. We can preserve some of the human feel by using the strength parameter, and we can randomize a bit. And we'll get into more of these parameters in other videos. But for now, I just want to do basic quantizing. So... Let me select all of these notes first so we can determine what we're going to quantize. And as soon as I hit apply now, we're going to see all these snap to values of 0, 120, 240, 360, or 480. There. Now let's deselect. And you can see there's zeros, 240s, 360s, and there we go. No 480s because that's the end, but 360, 240, 120. And if you listen back, it'll sound perfectly in time with the shaker.
Not that the shaker is perfectly played. That's human. That's not quantized either. But we can play it with the click, and we'll hear that it's right on. I'm going to option click this, bring this up. And we'll put on always click for the moment. And let's hear it. So that's Quantizing 101, a little quick start to basic MIDI recording and basic quantizing. In the next video, we're going to get into some more MIDI recording and quantizing permutations.